Like the video, your waifu gets the naifu. Part 1. White Clouds. Red Wolf Moon. The Flame in the Darkness. Remire Village is a beautiful level, even when it's on fire, especially when it's on fire. This map exemplifies the art style of the game, this sort of tabletop aesthetic. Everything feels like miniature figurines. Look at these trees, look at these buildings, look at the people. They look so good. It's one of the many maps that always makes me wish these were real life reusable game pieces for D&D or Pathfinder or some other tabletop game. Anyway, back to the map itself. This map is a spread out rescue mission. Dum Dum Green units are being hunted all throughout the level. It's pretty large, but rather condensed with buildings and terrain, mostly forests and rubble. These features are the key obstacles in your race against time to save the green units from certain destruction, and to stop your dad from stealing all the EXP, if you're about that sort of thing. The tight corridors and movement hampering terrain promotes the use of flying units and tests your ability to mobilize your party, something always welcome with the powerful stride gambit at your fingertips. This layout works with the tools that the game provides, and that's good, I like it. It's important in Fire Emblem games to set up obstacles that will give players a rough time to navigate, then establish time-sensitive objectives that will force players to make quick, efficient, and most importantly risky strategies to overcome the challenge set before them. And while most of the time-sensitive objectives in Treehouses are side objectives, meaning you don't have to risk more than you want to in order to complete the chapter, having that option still gives players the opportunity to play how they want to which goes with the team's design philosophy for this game of appealing to the casual and the hardcore audience. Unfortunately, while the layout of the map is well constructed, the enemy forces do not complement the design well. There are very few enemies clogging up the choke points naturally formed by the houses, and they are exceptionally weak. They are just shitty green units turned into shitty red units. We've reached the point in the game where our units have almost entirely closed the initial power gap. The game needs to increase its enemy threat levels if it wants the challenge to increase as well. The Death Knight even shows up again, but it's the third time at this point. This is the closest in power to your students that he has been so far. Your authority rank is much higher now, making it much easier to use your gambits, which is the main way of fighting the Death Knight, with Adelaide Sifi at least. If you have beaten him in either of the previous chapters, you most certainly can take him this time. And even if you haven't, this is probably your best opportunity. He just doesn't impose the same kind of threat that he used to. Last thing I want to mention that doesn't really have to do with anything, I just find it really funny that on maddening mode, after Tomas goes from inconspicuous green unit to big bad evil man, he just starts running away. He's just like, oh shit, is that Gerald the Blade Breaker? Oh fuck, I gotta get out of here. 6 out of 10, by the way. Setup works fine, but fix your enemies, please. 